On October 2nd, the Martian sky did something it wasn't supposed to do. In a nine-minute stack of raw frames from the Perseverance rover, a bright streak cut across the star field at roughly 60 kilometers per second, moving against the natural drift. 24 hours later, deeper looks at the same window suggested there might be more than one mover, and at the three-second mark, a compact emerald flash appears, too soft for a single hot pixel, too brief for a slow meteor, exactly the sort of glitch that forces you to pick a side. This all happened inside a pre-planned observation block when NASA's Higher Easy, ESA's Mars Express, and ExoMars slash Trace Gas Orbiter were aimed for the closest looks ever attempted at an interstellar visitor, specifically 3i Atlas during its near-Mars pass. And then came quiet. No quick-look frames, no teaser crops, just the bland processing note. That silence is gasoline for speculation. Artifact or anomaly, background rock or companion, chemistry switch or microplasma. So if you had the raw stack in your hands, what would you do first? Re-register on the star field to murder phantom points? Different successive frames to hunt coherent motion? Or split channels to see whether that green spike maps to any known line? Because if the October 2-3 to three frames truly contain more than one fast mover, we're no longer arguing about a single cometary nucleus, but about a spread-out system hiding in plain sight. The reason 3i Atlas won't leave people alone is not one clip, but a pile of mismatches. A forward bright, sunward envelope where tails are not supposed to lead. Green hues showing up while classic C2 chemistry looks depleted. Nickel showing without its usual iron partner in ratios that feel processed rather than primordial. A mass floor in the tens of billions of tons that blows up population models for a third ever interstellar catch. And sitting in the background like a lit fuse, a geometry that brushes the old wow signal line of sight close enough to make statistics sweat. Each piece has a boring but possible explanation. Odd phase angles can fake an anti-tail, radiation can mangle surface chemistry, stacking can grow ghosts, delayed releases happen, but stack them all and you start bending the natural model until it squeaks. The real separator will be tiny, testable deviations after solar conjunction, a brightness curve that stays too calm through heating, a forward bias that refuses to relax, a whisper of non-gravitational drift larger than outgassing can push, or a spectral fingerprint where nickel keeps winning even as iron should wake. If those drop in, do you call it intent, or do you double the calibration budget and blame the pipeline? Because your answer to that question says more about your priors than about the sky. Right now, 3i Atlas is tucked behind the sun, and the first frames on the far side will decide which world we wake up in. The ordinary world, where it returns exactly on the ephemeris, throws a familiar fan of dust, maybe sheds a fragment. Chemistry drifts toward normal as deeper layers vent, and the Mars hints fade into background noise. Or the other world, where nothing is cinematic but the small things line up. A clean, repeatable deviation larger than venting can explain. A sun-facing envelope that persists through changing phase, a stubborn nickel-heavy signature, and maybe one or two compact points that stay phase-locked like disciplined companions. If it's world two, the next move isn't aliens yes no, but process. Do we go radically open with raws so the crowd can break and remake claims in daylight, or slow roll through cautious confirmations and bleed trust? Pick your threshold now and tell me where you move. One coherent deviation, one spectral anomaly, one companion that refuses to be a ghost, or do you demand all three? Because when 3i Atlas steps back into view, the difference between extreme but natural and something with intent may be one frame, one line, one kink in the path, and whether we notice it will depend on how ready we are to see it. When 3i Atlas steps out of solar glare, the truth hides in five tiny dials that the first stacks can turn either way without fireworks or headlines. Brightness versus phase must behave like a heated dusty coma and not like a dimmer switch with discrete steps. Morphology should relax from that forward biased, sunward glow toward a tail pushed cleanly away from the sun instead of clinging stubbornly to the direction of motion. Centroid drift has to sit inside what venting can plausibly push, because even a whisper of extra acceleration that repeats overnights would say, there's more here, louder than any viral clip. Spectrum needs to stop privileging nickel over iron as illumination climbs, 
Otherwise, we're left inventing ad hoc chemistry to keep nature on the hook. And the notorious green spike must map to a known line and a consistent geometry rather than popping up like a mood light that cannot be tied to C2 or oxygen. None of this requires secret data. Just clean registration on the fixed star field, difference imaging to murder phantom points, independent stacks from people who disagree, and time-correlated notes so we can see whether a claimed effect repeats when the phase angle changes. If those dials all turn toward ordinary, we file three I atlas under extreme but natural and keep our humility. If even two lock the other way, the conversation shifts from could this be to how do we test it next? What would be your first move when the raws drop? Restack the Mars window cadence to chase second movers, fit a low order thrust term to the sky path, or split the green into narrowband to see whether it's chemistry or choreography. Say it now so we can measure you against your own bar later. There are three practical forks we can choose the minute three, I Atlas reappears, and none require believing anything extraordinary. Fork one is method. Radical openness versus careful curation. If the community gets raws, calibration files, and pipeline notes up front, the crowd can break bad claims fast and rescue good ones before rumor sets like concrete. If we slow roll, we save face in official channels but bleed trust when amateur reconstructions run ahead anyway, pick a lane, because the story will be written either way. Fork 2 is modality. Don't just stare in broadband. Put ears on the sky near the hydrogen line while the optical teams chase light curves, because if the wow geometry matters at all, a quiet narrowband listen costs little and could settle years of arm waving. Pair that with simple, falsifiable optical tests, multi-filter photometry to watch whether nickel-heavy fingerprints strengthen while iron should wake, short exposure tracking to catch micro kinks in motion that would be smeared out in long stacks, and time-synced narrowband to ask whether the green transient is gas physics or something that behaves like a signal. Fork 3 is geometry. If companions exist, they will give themselves away through consistency, not drama, Phase-locked separations, repeatable position angles, tiny mutual occultations against background stars that recur at the right cadence. That's not sci-fi, it's patient watching. Your assignment for the comments, if you're game, choose one fork in each category, data policy, observing band, geometry, and define the single measurement that would make you switch sides from just a comet to something coordinated, or back again if you're already leaning the other way. When 3i Atlas returns from behind the sun, the noise ends and the ledger closes. Either the light curve flows like heat, the forward glow relaxes into a tail, iron finally wakes beside nickel, the green pop lands on a known line, and the path stays stubbornly gravitational, at which point we file this as extreme but natural and learn how strange comets can be. Or two or three needles twitch the other way, a small, repeatable nudge beyond venting. A sunward bias that refuses to die. A spectral fingerprint that keeps privileging nickel. A compact point that stays phase-locked over nights. If that happens, the question is no longer, could it be? But how do we measure it in daylight? With roars opened early, methods shared, and claims killed or confirmed in public. No capitals, no drama, just receipts. Brightness versus phase. Centroid drift versus seeing, narrow band IDs for the green, and geometry checks to decide whether multiple movers were ghosts or companions. My threshold is written here, one coherent non-gravitational term, one repeatable line-identified green event that won't sit on C2 or oxygen, and one phase-locked companion over multiple nights, and I move. Short of that, I hold natural and keep testing. Your turn. Write your threshold in the comments before the first frames land, name the two measurements that would make you betray your own narrative, and promise to honor them when they arrive. Because whatever we want this to be, the sky doesn't bargain. Soon we either shelve a riddle or meet a possibility, and in both cases the win is the same. We stayed precise, stayed open, and let the evidence, not our priors, write the last line.